In this video today, I am going to reveal how you can master research methods, quantitative research, and qualitative data analysis in just 48 hours using AI tools. Picture this, you've been struggling with their dissertation proposal, feeling overwhelmed by the sheer volume of work, the complexity of research methods, and the pressure to get it right. But what if I told you there is a way to streamline the process, make it more efficient, and even enjoy it. That's exactly what we're going to dive into today. Now, let me introduce myself. My name is Dr. Anthony Robinson, and I completed my second dissertation back in 2016. And since then, I've been able to help thousands of doctoral and PhD students get their dissertations approved in as little as six months. How? By leveraging a proven blueprint that's been used successfully by hundreds of students across the country. I've seen firsthand the challenges students face balancing family, work, and studies, and I'm here to tell you that it doesn't have to be this hard. Today, we will explore practical, actionable strategies to enhance your research methodology skills, understand the nuances of both quantitative and qualitative research, and utilize AI tools to speed up the proposal completion. By the end of this video, you will have a clear roadmap to tackle your dissertation proposal efficiently and effectively. But before we jump into the details, let me share a quick story about one of our Writers ER students. Me, Jessica, a dedicated educator, a mother of two, and a PhD student who was on the brink of giving up. Jessica was struggling to juggle her responsibilities and make her progress on her dissertation. She felt stuck, frustrated, and ready to throw in the towel. That's when she found Writer's ER. With our guidance, Jessica not only completed her dissertation proposal in record time, but also discovered a newfound confidence in her research skills. Today, she's not just a PhD holder, but also a published author sharing her insights and experiences with the wider audience. Now, let's talk about what you will learn in this video. We will start by understanding the importance of choosing the right research method for your dissertation, whether it's quantitative, qualitative, or a mix of both. The right approach can make a world of difference. We will break down the key differences between these methods and help you decide which one suits your research questions and objectives the best. Next, we will dive into quantitative research methods where you will learn how to design effective surveys, conduct experiments, and perform statistical analysis. We will cover essential tools like SPSS, R, and Excel. And I'll even share some tips on how to make your data collection process smoother and more efficient. Then we will shift gears to qualitative research methods. From conducting in-depth interviews to running focus groups, you will get a comprehensive overview of how to gather and interpret qualitative data. We will also look at tools like Invivo and Atlas.ti that can simplify the process of coding and thematic analysis. But that's not all. We will also explore the exciting world of mixed methods research. Combining quantitative and qualitative approaches can provide a richer, more nuanced understanding of your research problem I will show you how to integrate these methods seamlessly and address the common challenges mixed methods research. And here's where it gets even more interesting, leveraging AI tools to accelerate your research. From literature reviews to data analysis and even writing, AI can be a game changer. So I'll introduce you to some powerful AI tools that can save you hours of work and significantly enhance the quality of your research. Throughout this video, I will also share practical tips on how to complete your dissertation proposal in just 48 hours. Yes, you heard it right. With the right strategies and tools, you can achieve what might seem impossible right now. But time management, clear objectives, and a clear step-by-step -step plan are key. And don't worry, I will guide you through each step of the process. Now, I know this might sound overwhelming, but remember, you're not alone. At Writers ER, we specialize in helping students like you to navigate the complexities of dissertation writing. Our proven blueprint has helped countless students 
get their dissertations approved swiftly and with confidence. And the best part, we offer personalized guidance tailored to your unique needs and challenges. So if you're feeling stuck or unsure about the next steps, I encourage you to visit our website. The link is in the description below. So schedule a call with one of our admission counselors and let us map out a dissertation roadmap for you. This is your opportunity to get personalized expert advice and take control of your academic journey. By the end of this video, you will not only have a clear understanding of research methods and data analysis, but also practical tools and strategies to apply them effectively. Imagine the relief of having a well-structured proposal and the confidence of knowing you're on the right track and the satisfaction of moving closer to your academic goals. So let's get started on this exciting journey together. And remember that mastering your dissertation doesn't have to be a solo effort. With the right support and tools, you can achieve more than you ever thought possible. So stay tuned as we dive deep into each section, providing you with the knowledge and insights that you need to succeed. And don't forget, if you ever need someone just to talk to about your dissertation struggles, we are always here for you. So visit our website, book a call, and let's make your dissertation journey a successful and enjoyable one. Understanding research methods is absolutely crucial for the success of your dissertation. Think of it this way. Choosing the right research method is like picking the right tool for a job. You wouldn't use a hammer to paint a wall, right? Similarly, the right research method aligns your research questions and objectives, ensuring that you gather the most relevant and accurate data. So let's break it down a bit more. There are two main types of research methods, quantitative and qualitative. Each serves a different purpose and is suited to different kinds of research questions. Understanding their differences will help you to choose the best approach for your dissertation. Quantitative research is all about numbers and statistical analysis. It's used to quantify behaviors, opinions, attitudes, and other defined variables, and generalize results from a larger sample population. Quantitative research answers the what, where, and when questions. It's about measuring variables and testing hypotheses to determine patterns and to predict outcomes. For example, let's say you're studying the impact of a new teaching method on student performance. You might use quantitative methods to collect test scores before and after the implementation. You could then analyze this data statistically to see if there's a significant improvement. Common tools for quantitative research include surveys, experiments, and secondary data analysis. On the other hand, qualitative research is all about understanding the why and how behind a phenomenon. It's more exploratory and focuses on understanding the deeper meanings, experiences, and perspectives of participants. If you're interested in the lived experiences of teachers using a new curriculum, qualitative research would be ideal. Methods like interviews, focus groups, and ethnography allow you to gather detailed insights and stories. So imagine you're exploring how teachers feel about integrating technology in a classroom. Through qualitative methods, you could conduct interviews to understand their experiences, their challenges, and their successes in depth. The data you collect is typically non-numerical and is analyzed through coding and thematic analysis to identify patterns and themes. Then we have mixed methods research, which combines both quantitative and qualitative approaches, offering a more comprehensive view. This method can be particularly useful when neither quantitative nor qualitative data alone can fully answer your research questions. For example, you might use surveys to gather broad quantitative data and follow up with interviews for a deeper qualitative insight or deeper qualitative insights. Choosing the right method starts with your research questions. Ask yourself, what do I need to know? If your questions are about measuring something or testing a hypothesis, quantitative methods are your go-to. If you're exploring meanings, experiences, or processes, 
qualitative methods are more suitable for a rich, well-rounded perspective, consider a mixed methods approach. Let's walk through a practical example to make this a little bit clearer. Suppose your research question is, how does social media usage affect the academic performance of high school students? Here's how you might decide on your research method. You could distribute a survey to a large sample of high school students asking about their social media habits and their GPA. The numerical data collected would allow you to perform statistical analysis to identify any correlations or patterns. Alternatively, you could conduct in-depth interviews with a smaller group of students to understand their experiences and perceptions of how social media impacts their study habits and academic performance. This approach will give you a detailed, nuanced insight into the data that you collect. But what about, what if you combine these approaches? You might start with a survey to gather broad quantitative data on social media usage and academic performance, then select a few respondents to follow up with interviews to explore their experiences in greater depth. This approach provides both breadth and depth, giving you a fuller picture. When choosing your method, consider the strengths and limitations of each approach. Quantitative methods are great for generalizing results to a larger population, but they might miss the deeper context. Qualitative methods provide rich, detailed data, but the findings might not be as easily generalizable. Mixed methods offer a balanced approach, but can be more time consuming and complex to implement. To decide on the best method, also think about the resources you have, time, access to participants, and analytical tools. If you have a large sample size and access to statistical software, quantitative methods might be more feasible. If you have limited resources, but can conduct in-depth interviews, qualitative methods might be a better fit. Remember, the goal is to align your research method with your research questions and objectives. This alignment assures that you gather data that is relevant, accurate, and meaningful, ultimately strengthening your dissertation. Now, let's talk about how AI tools can support you in this process. Tools like Qualtrics, and Google Forms can help you design and distribute surveys more efficiently. For a statistical analysis software like SPSS and R, you can crunch the numbers and provide uh, insights for your data. For qualitative analysis, tools like Invivo can assist you in the coding and thematic analysis, making it much easier to identify patterns and themes in your data. By leveraging these AI tools, you can streamline your research process, save time, and ensure accuracy in your data analysis. This efficiency is crucial, especially when you're working under tight deadlines. For instance, let's consider the AI tool in Vivo. This tool can help you organize and analyze your qualitative data. You can also upload transcripts from interviews and in Vivo will assist you in the coding and identifying of themes. This saves you hours of manual work and helps ensure that you don't miss any crucial insights. Or think about SPSS for quantitative data. It can handle large data sets and perform complex statistical analysis quickly and accurately. You can also run tests to see if your hypothesis are supported by the data, create charts and graphs to visualize your findings, and so much more. Integrating these tools into your research process not only makes your work more efficient, but also improves the quality of your analysis to help you to get a focus more on interpreting the data and less time on the tedious aspects of data management and analysis. Before we move on to the next section, I want to remind you that if you're feeling alone and feeling overwhelmed or unsure about choosing the right research method, Writers ER is here to help our team of experts can provide you personalized guidance tailored to your specific needs. So visit our website, the link is in the description below, and schedule a call with one of our admission counselors where we can map out a dissertation roadmap that sets you on a path for success. In this next section, we will dive deeper into the quantitative research methods 
that I will talk about today. We will also discuss how to design effective surveys, conduct experiments, and analyze your data. So stick with me and you will soon have all the tools that you need and the knowledge that you need to ace your dissertation proposal. All right, let's dive into qualitative research methods. Qualitative research is all about exploring the deeper meanings, experiences, and perspectives behind a phenomenon. Unlike quantitative research, which focuses on numbers and statistical analysis, qualitative research seeks to understand the why and the how of human behavior. It's about getting rich, detailed insights that can ultimately help you develop a deeper understanding of your research topic. So let's start with a clear definition. Qualitative research involves collecting and analyzing non-numerical data to understand concepts, opinions, or experiences. It's often used in the social sciences, humanities, and health sciences to explore complex issues that cannot be quantified. This type of research is particularly useful when you want to explore new areas where little is known or to gain a deeper understanding of a well-studied topic. One of the most common methods in qualitative research is the interview. Interviews are a powerful tool for gathering detailed information about people's thoughts, feelings, and experiences. They can be structured, semi-structured, or unstructured depending on your, your research goals. Structured interviews follow a list of questions ensuring consistency across all interviews. This is useful when you need comparable data from all participants. However, they can be limiting if you want to explore topics in more depth. Semi-structured interviews offer a balanced approach between structure and flexibility. You have a list of questions, but you can also follow up on interesting points and explore new topics as they arise. This allows for more richer, more detailed data while maintaining some level of consistency. Unstructured interviews are the most flexible, ultimately. You have a general topic or set of topics to cover, but the conversation flows more naturally, allowing participants to guide the discussion. This can lead to unexpected insights and a deeper understanding of the participant's perspective. When conducting interviews, it's important to create a comfortable and open environment. Start with easy, non-threatening questions to build rapport and make your participants feel a little bit more at ease. During this process, you want to listen actively, show interest in what they're saying, and avoid interrupting. Use open-ended questions to encourage detailed responses and follow up with probing questions to explore interesting points further. For example, if you're researching the experiences of teachers during the transition to online learning, you might start off with a question like, can you tell me more about your experience with online teaching? Follow that up with questions like, what challenges did you face? And how did you overcome these challenges? This approach allows you to gather rich detailed data about their experiences. Another common qualitative method is the focus group. Focus groups involve a small group of people discussing a topic under the guidance of a facilitator. This method is useful in exploring how people interact and discuss a topic and for generating a range of perspectives and ideas. When conducting a focus group, it's important to create a safe and inclusive environment where all participants feel comfortable sharing the thought. So in this process, you might start with something like an icebreaker to help participants get to know each other and to feel more at ease. As a facilitator, your role is to guide the discussion, keep it on track, and to ensure that everyone has a chance to speak. Uh, in this process, you, you might use open-ended questions to encourage discussion and follow up on interesting points. For example, if you're conducting a focus group on student experiences with online learning, you might start with a question like, what has been your overall experience with online classes? So you might follow up by questions like, what do you like about online learning? And what challenges have you faced? Encourage participants to build on each other's responses and discuss the different perspectives. Ethnography is another valuable qualitative method. Ethnography involves immersing yourself in a community or setting 
to observe and understand people's behaviors and interactions in their natural context. This method is particularly useful for studying courses, subcultures, and social groups. Conducting ethnographic research requires a deep level of engagement and ultimately observation. You might spend time in a classroom, community center, or workplace observing and taking detailed notes on people's behaviors, their interactions, and the context in which they occur. It's important to remain unobtrusive as possible and to respect the privacy and confidentiality of the people that you're studying. Once you've collected your qualitative data, the next step is to analyze it. This involves coding and thematic analysis. Coding is the process of labeling and organizing your data into categories or themes. Thematic analysis involves identifying patterns and themes within your data and interpreting their meanings. So let's talk about the tools that can help uh, with this process. In Bebo and AtlasTI.ti are the two most powerful software tools for qualitative data analysis. And Bebo allows you to import and organize your data, code, text, and multimedia and identify patterns and themes. With this tool, you can create visualizations like word clouds and concept maps to help you see connections and trends in your data. Atlas.ti is another great tool for qualitative analysis. It offers similar features to Ambivo with the focus on coding and visualizing your data. You can create networks of codes and themes, explore relationships between them, and generate reports to summarize your findings. Use these tools. Uh, using these tools can save you a lot of time and ultimately a lot of effort. They make it easier to manage large amounts of data, ensure accuracy and consistency in your coding, and identify patterns and themes that might uh, not be immediately obvious. For example, let's say you conducted a series of interviews with teachers about their experiences with online learning. You might start by coding the transcripts, labeling sections of the text that can relate to different topics or themes such as challenges, successes, student engagement, and technology issues. Once you've coded your data, you can then use Envivo or Atlas.ti to identify patterns and relationships between these themes and to generate visualizations that help you see the bigger picture. Analyzing qualitative data is not just about finding patterns, but also about interpreting their meanings and implications. This involves thinking critically about your data, considering different perspectives, and drawing on relevant theories and literature to inform your analysis. It's a complex and iterative process, no doubt, but it's also incredibly uh, rewarding. By diving deep into your data, and exploring the rich detailed insights it offers, you can develop a deeper understanding of your research topic and generate valuable contributions to your field. So before we move on to the next section, I want to remind you that ultimately, if you're feeling overwhelmed or unsure about conducting qualitative research, Writers ER is here to help. Our team of experts can provide you personalized guidance tailored specifically to your needs. So visit our website. The link is in the description below. Uh, you can schedule a call with one of our admission counselors uh, to get some help today. So let's map out a plan of research that sets you on a path to success. Um, in the next section, um, I want to talk about and explore how to effectively use AI tools to accelerate your research process. Uh, in this section, we will uh, discuss the tools for literature reviews, data analysis, and writing to show how they can save you time and ultimately enhance the quality of your research. So stick with me um, and you'll soon have the tools and the knowledge you need to ace your dissertation proposal. Before we jump into the use of AI, let's dive into mixed methods research, a powerful approach that combines both quantitative and qualitative techniques to give you a more comprehensive understanding of your research problem. Mixed methods research is like having the best of both worlds. You get the detailed numerical data uh, from quantitative methods and the rich descriptive insights from qualitative methods. By integrating these two approaches, you can address research questions from multiple angles and develop a deeper, more nuanced understanding of your topic. 
So first, let's talk about what mixed methods research actually is and why it's so beneficial. Mixed methods research involves collecting, analyzing, and integrating both quantitative and qualitative data within a single study or a series of studies. This approach allows you to capitalize on the strengths of both, both types of data while compensating for their individual weaknesses. For instance, quantitative data can provide a broad overview and identify general patterns, while qualitative data can offer deeper insights into those patterns. So let me give you an example. Imagine you're studying the impact of remote learning on student performance and engagement. Using a mixed methods approach, you could start by conducting a survey to gather quantitative data on students' grades and attendance records. This data could ultimately help you identify trends such as whether students' grades have improved or declined since transitioning to remote learning, but grades and attendance only tell parts of the story. To understand why these challenges are happening, you might conduct interviews or focus groups with students and teachers to gather qualitative data. These conversations that uh, could ultimately reveal that students are struggling with time management, feeling isolated, or facing technical difficulties. By combining these methods, you get a fuller picture of the impact of remote learning encompassing both measurable outcomes and personal experiences. Now, let's look at another example of this. Suppose you're researching the effectiveness of a new teaching strategy in improving student engagement. You could use quantitative methods such as pre and post tests to measure uh, changes in student engagement levels before and after implementing the strategy. This would give you numerical evidence of the strategy's impact. At the same time, you could use qualitative methods like classroom observations and student interviews to understand how the strategy is being implemented and what students think about it. This qualitative data can provide insights into the nuances of how the strategy works, what aspects are most effective, and any challenges or barriers to its implementation. Combining these methods allows you to validate your findings through multiple data sources and gain a more comprehensive understanding of your research problem. It also helps you to address the different types of research questions. For example, quantitative methods can answer questions like, what is the effect on X and Y? Or what, what is the effect of X on Y? While qualitative methods can answer questions like, how and why? Or how and why does X affect Y? However, um, it's also important to note that mixed methods research also comes with its own set of challenges. One of the main challenges is integrating the two types of data in a meaningful way. It's not enough to simply collect uh, quantitative and qualitative data separately. You need to find ways to connect and synthesize these data to draw comprehensive conclusions. One effective strategy is to use a, a sequential expl explanatory design where you start with quantitative data collection and analysis followed by qualitative data collection and analysis to explain or build on quantitative results. For instance, you might begin with a survey to identify key trends and, and then follow up with interviews to explore those trends in more depth. This approach ultimately allows the quantitative data to provide context and insights into quantitative findings. Another strategy is the concurrent triangulation design, where you collect both quantitative and qualitative data simultaneously and then compare and contrast the results. This approach allows you to validate your findings through multiple data sources and provides a more robust understanding of your research problem. For example, you might administer a survey and conduct focus groups at the same time then anal analyze and compare the results to identify converging or diverging patterns. Managing and analyzing the data from mixed methods research can also be complex and time consuming. 
it's important to have a clear plan for how you will integrate and analyze the data from the onset. Using software tools like Invivo uh, for qualitative data and SPSS or R for quantitative data can ultimately help you streamline the process and ensure consistency in your analysis. Communication is another challenge in the mixed methods research, especially when working with the team. It's essential to ensure that all team members understand the purpose and the process of the research and are on the same page about how to integrate the data. Regular meetings and clear documentation can help facilitate effective communication and collaboration. Despite these challenges, the benefits of mixed methods research make it a valuable approach for many studies. It provides a more complete understanding of your research problem, allows you to address different types of research questions, and strengthens the validity of your research findings through data triangulation. At Writers ER, we understand the complexities and challenges of mixed methods research. Our team of experts can provide personalized guidance to help you design, implement, and analyze mixed methods studies effectively. Whether you need help with data integration and analysis or overcoming a logistical challenges, we are here to support you every step of the way. So visit our website and schedule a consultation to discuss how we can assist you with your mixed methods research needs. Now, let's dive into some actionable advice for conducting mixed methods research. Start by clearly uh, defining your research questions and determining how each method will help you answer them. For example, if you're investigating the impact of a new teaching method, you might ask, what is the impact of the teaching method on student performance? For your quantitative component, you might ask, how do students perceive the new teaching method? For your, quali for your qualitative component, next, you want to develop a detailed plan for data collection and analysis. Decide whether you will use a sequential or a concurrent design and outline the specific steps for each phase of your research. For instance, if you're using a sequential explanatory design, plan out your quantitative survey and analysis first, followed by qualitative interviews or focus groups to explore the survey results in more depth. When collecting data, it's important to ensure that your uh, quantitative and qualitative methods are aligned with each other and that they are complementary. This means designing survey questions that can be explored further through interviews or focus groups and ensuring that your interview questions are informed by your survey findings. For example, if your survey reveals that a significant number of students are struggling with time management and remote learning, you might include specific questions about time management strategies and challenges in your interview. As you analyze your data, look for ways to integrate and synthesize your findings. This might involve creating a joint display table that shows how your quantitative and qualitative findings relate to each other, or using qualitative data to provide context and explanation for quantitative results. For instance, if your quantitative data shows a drop in student engagement during remote learning, your qualitative data might reveal specific factors contributing to this drop, such as lack of interaction with peers or technical issues. Throughout the research process, maintain a flexible and iterative approach. Mixed methods research often involves going back and forth between different phases of data collection and analysis and being open to new insight and directions as they emerge. For example, your initial survey findings might lead you to refine your interview questions or conduct additional interviews to explore unexpected themes. Ultimately, uh, mixed methods research offers you a powerful approach for gaining a comprehensive understanding of complex research problems. By combining the strengths of quantitative and qualitative methods, you can address a wider range of research questions, validate your findings through data triangulation, and develop deeper insights into your topic. While it ultimately comes with its own set of challenges, careful planning, 
effective data integration and clear communication uh, can ultimately help you navigate these challenges and maximize the benefits of mixed methods research. Remember, at Writers ER, we are ultimately here to support you in, in your mixed methods uh, research journey. Whether you need guidance on designing your study, collecting and analyzing data, or integrating your findings, our team of experts is ready to help. So visit our website, schedule a consultation to discuss how we can assist you with your mixed me methods research um, and ultimately help you get through this process successfully. In the next section, I will explore how to effectively use AI tools to accelerate your research process. So I will discuss with you the tools for literature reviews, data analysis, and writing to show you how they can save you time and enhance your quality in your research. So stick with me. Uh, you have soon have the tools that you need uh, to get your dissertation approved as quickly as possible. Let's dive into one of the most exciting parts of modern research, leveraging AI tools to accelerate your research process. Whether you're just starting out or you're deep into your dissertation, AI tools can make a significant difference in efficiency, accuracy, and overall ease. In this next part, I'm going to cover how these tools can assist in various stages of the research process from literature review uh, to data collection and analysis and finally to writing and editing. So first let's talk about the literature review. Conducting a thorough literature review is crucial as it forms the foundation of your research. However, it can be incredibly time consuming to sift through countless articles, books, and papers. So this is where AI tools like Zotero, EndNote, and Mendeley come into play. Zotero is a free, easy to use tool that helps you collect, organize, cite, and share your research sources. Imagine you're, you're researching the effects of online learning on student performance. With Zotero, you can save articles directly from your web browser, organize them into collections for different themes or sections of your dissertation, and even generate citations and bibliographies in the style that you need. It's like having a personal research assistant who's always on top of things. EndNote is another powerful reference management tool that not only helps you manage your citations, but also offers advanced features like group collaboration. So if you're working on a team project or need to share your sources with your advisor, EndNote can make this process seamless. You can import references from databases, organize them in your library, and instantly format your bibliography. It's especially useful for large-scale projects where managing sources might be a nightmare. Mendeley, uh, similar to Zotero and EndNote, offers an integrated workflow for managing your references and collaborating with others. One unique feature of Mendeley is its ability to suggest related research based on papers that you've added to your library. This can help you discover important articles that you might have otherwise missed. For example, if you've added a few key studies on online learning, Mendeley can recommend additional research that aligns with your topic, expanding your literature review with minimal effort. Now, now that you've gathered uh, and organized your sources, Let's talk about data collection and analysis. This is where tools like Qualtrics, Google Forms, and Tableau shine. Qualtrics is a robust platform for designing surveys, collecting data, and analyzing results. Whether you need to create a simple survey or a complex experimental uh, design, Qualtrics has you covered. It offers advanced question types, logic branching, and even integrates with statistical software like SPSS. For example, if you're studying student engagement in online classes, you can design a survey in Qualtrics to gather responses and then export the data for a deeper statistical analysis. Google Forms is a more straightforward, user-friendly option for creating surveys and quizzes. It's great for gathering large amounts of data quickly. You can easily share the form with respondents via email or social media and track their responses in real time. Google Forms also integrates with Google Sheets, allowing you to manage and analyze your data more seamlessly. 
So imagine that you need to collect demographic information and initial feedback on a new teaching method. Google Forms can ultimately handle this e a little bit more efficiently, giving you a clear overview of the data as it comes in. For data analysis, Tableau is an incredibly powerful tool for visualizing your data. It turns complex data into understandable, interactive visualization. Let's say you've collected survey data on student performance across different teaching methods. With Tableau, you can create dynamic charts and graphs that highlight trends and patterns in your data. This not only makes your analysis more engaging, but also helps you draw more accurate conclusions. Moving on to writing and the editing phase, AI tools like Grammarly, Schneider, and Turnitin can be ultimate game changers. Uh, Grammarly is an advanced AI power writing assistant that goes beyond grammar checks. It helps you to improve your writing style, clarity, and tone. For instance, if you're writing the discussion section of your dissertation and want to ensure your arguments are clear and concise, Grammarly can offer real-time suggestions and enhance your writing. It also can detect plagiarism. Uh, we also recommend turning in for, for that, ensuring that your work is original, uh, whereas Shrivener is a writing software uh, designed specifically for long-form writing projects. It offers a distraction-free writing environment along with powerful tools for organizing your document. You can break uh, your dissertation into sections, chapters, or uh, scenes and easily move them around as needed. Um, this is a corkboard and outliner uh, that features help and it helps you to visualize and structure your project, making it easier to manage complex documents. Turn it in, as I mentioned a second ago, is widely known for plagiarism detection capabilities, but it also offers tools for grading and feedback. As a researcher, you can use Turnitin to check your work for potential plagiarism and ensure that all sources are properly cited. This is especially important uh, for maintaining academic integrity and avoiding any issues with your dissertation committee. Now, you might be wondering how to integrate all of these tools effectively. And this is where Writer's ER comes in. At Writer's ER, we help you to incorporate these AI tools by using our proven blueprint uh, that helps you to streamline your research process from organizing your literature review with Zotero or EndNote to designing and analyzing surveys with Qualtrics and ensuring your writing is top-notch with Grammarly. We provide comprehensive support. Ultimately, our goal is to make your research journey as smooth and efficient as possible. If you're feeling overwhelmed by the sheer number of tools available and how to use them effectively, don't worry. Our team at Writers ER is here to guide you every step of the way. So visit our website. The link is in the description below. Uh, schedule a call with one of our consultants so that we can help you to map out a personalized plan that integrates these AI tools into your research workflow, ensuring that you stay on track and achieve your goals. So in the next section, I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into specific case studies where researchers have successfully leveraged uh, some of these AI tools and enhanced um, their work. I'll ultimately help you to, you know, explore the strategies and challenges and the remarkable outcomes that they achieve. So stick with me and you will soon have all the tools and the knowledge that you need to ace your dissertation proposal. All right, let's talk about how to complete your dissertation proposal in just 48 hours. Yes, you heard that right. While it might sound daunting with a clear plan uh, and some of some effective strategies, it's entirely doable. So let's break it down step by step. First, um, first things first, preparation is key. Before you even start writing, make sure that you have a clear research question and objectives. This is the foundation of your proposal and everything else will build upon it. So take some time to think deeply about what you want to investigate and why it matters. Having a precise and focused research question will ultimately guide your entire writing process and keep you on track. Once you have your research question and objectives, it's time to create a detailed outline. This will serve as your roadmap for the next 48 hours. Start with the major sections, title, abstract, introduction, 
literature review, methodology, expected outcomes, timeline, and references. Under each section, jot down the key points that you need to cover. This outline doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to give you the clear structure that you will ultimately follow. Now, let's get into the nitty gritty of time management. The key to completing your proposal quickly is to break down your work into manageable chunks and stick to a strict schedule. So divide the 48 hours into a fo focused writing sessions with short breaks in between to rest and recharge. For instance, you might work in 90 minute blocks followed by a 15 minute break. This method often referred to as the Pomodoro technique can help you to maintain high levels of productivity without burning out. Also, uh, you wanna start with sections that are easier uh, for you that are the ones that you feel most confident about. This will help you to build momentum and boost your confidence as you see the progress that you're making. For many, the introduction or the literature review might be a good starting point. This introduction uh, sets the stage for your research, explaining the background and the importance of your study. So you want to make it engaging and informative, drawing the reader in and making them want to learn more about your research. When writing the literature review, focus on summarizing and synthesizing the key studies related to your topic. Here's where you want to highlight the gaps in the existing research uh, that your study aims to fill. Uh, remember, you're not just listing studies, you're creating a narrative that shows how your research builds on and contributes to the existing body of knowledge. Next, move on to the methodology section. This is the part that needs to be detailed and precise, explaining how you plan to conduct your research clearly. This is also where you want to clearly describe your research design, data collection methods, and data analysis plan. If you're using quantitative methods, specify your sampling techniques, your survey or experiment design, and statistical analysis methods. If you're using qualitative methods, discuss your interview or focus group protocols and how you will analyze the qualitative data. As you write, keep referring back to your research question and objectives to ensure that everything you include is relevant and contributes to answering your research question. This will ultimately help you stay focused and avoid of going off on tangents. Now, let's talk about the abstract. Although it's typically uh, the first section of your proposal, it's often easier to write this part last. Once you have a clear understanding of your entire proposal, the abstract should be a concise summary of your research question, objectives, methodology, and expected outcomes. So keep it brief. Uh, make sure that it captures the essence of your entire uh, proposal. Once you have a draft of each section, it's time to revise and polish um, your work. So pay attention to clarity and co coherence. Each section should flow logically into the next, uh, creating si a seamless narrative. Um, and also uh, make sure that your language is clear and concise and that you have avoided any jargon or complex terms that might confuse your reader. Tools like Grammarly can help you uh, with grammar and style ensuring that your writing style is professional and error-free. Throughout the process, it's crucial to stay organized. So tools like uh, Trello or Asana to track your progress and ensure that you're staying on schedule are key. Uh, keep all of your research materials, notes, and drafts organized in one place, whether it's a digital folder or a physical binder. Another important tip is to seek feedback as you go. If possible, Share your drafts with a mentor, a client success advisor, um, with our team, um, or you know a trusted peer to get their input. They can also provide you valuable insights and catch any issues that you might have missed. Now, let's address the inevitable distractions. In a 48-hour marathon writing session, staying focused is crucial, so find a quiet, comfortable workspace where you won't be interrupted. Turn off notifications on your phone, um, and computer and consider using productivity apps like Forest or Focus at, uh, Focus at Will to, to ultimately help you stay on task. 
if you start to feel overwhelmed or, or stuck, take a step back and breathe. Sometimes a short walk or a quick workout can help clear your mind and reset your focus. So remember, this is a marathon, not a sprint, and taking care of your physical and mental well-being is just as important as getting the words down on the paper. So let's talk about the final push. As you approach the end of your 48-hour period, you'll want to go through the entire proposal one last time. So check for any inconsistencies, ensure that your arguments are clear and well supported, and make sure that all of your references are correctly formatted. This final review is your chance to catch any last minute errors and ensure that your proposal is polished and professional. Remember that you don't have to do this alone because at Writers ER, we have helped countless students successfully navigate the dissertation proposal process. Our proven blueprint combined with personalized guidance from our team of experts can help you streamline your research and writing process. And we understand the challenges that you face and are happy to support you every step of the way. So if you need assistance or just want to ensure that you're on the right track, visit our website to schedule a call at the link in the description. We are here to help you succeed. So ultimately, completing a dissertation proposal in 48 hours is ambitious, but with a clear plan, effective time management, and the right tools, it's entirely possible. Start with a clear research question and objectives, create a detailed outline, and work in focused, manageable chunks. Stay organized, seek feedback, and take care of yourself throughout the process. And remember, professional help is just a call away if you need it. In the next section, I will talk about how to effectively use AI tools to accelerate your research process. Um, in this section, I will discuss the tools for literature reviews, data analysis, and writing to show how they can help you save time and enhance your quality of research. So stick with me and I'll make sure that you get all the tools and knowledge that you need to ace your dissertation proposal. Now that we've covered the essentials of research methods on how to accelerate your dissertation proposal with AI tools, it's time to take a practical step forward. To ensure that you can apply everything that you've learned, I've prepared a worksheet that you can download. This worksheet is designed to guide you through each stage of the proposal process, helping you stay organized and on track. So let's talk about each section of the worksheet together so you can make the most of it. So grab your download and let's get started. First, you will find a section titled Research Question and Objectives. This is your foundation. So start by clearly stating your research question. For instance, if you're studying the impact of online learning on high school students, you might write, what are the effects of online learning on academic performance of high school students. Next, outline your research objectives. This should be specific, measurable goals that you desire or aim to achieve through your study. For instance, to evaluate the overall academic performance of students engaged in online learning compared to traditional classroom settings and to identify key factors that influence student success in online learning environments. Having a clear research question and objectives will keep you focused and ensure that every part of your proposal aligns with your main goals. So you wanna write these down in the worksheet and keep them in front of you as you work through your other sections. Next, we will move to the literature review section. Here you will summarize key studies related to your topic. So you wanna begin by noting the major themes and findings from your literature review. For example, if previous studies have shown mixed results regarding online learning, highlight those discrepancies. Summarize each study briefly, noting the author's publication year and main finding. This helps you to see the big picture and identify gaps that your research will address. For example, for one entry might look like, like this, Smith and Jones, parentheses 2020, close parentheses, found that online learning can lead to improved flexibility and access, but also noted a decrease in student engagement compared to traditional classrooms. 
Repeat this process for each major study that you are including. The worksheet will have spaces for you to list these summaries and notes on how you can relate to your research question. The next section, methodology, is where you detail your research design. So start by specifying where your study is quantitative, qualitative, or mixed method. Describe your data collection techniques. If you're using surveys, explain how you will design and distribute them. For example, for the survey, you will include mix of Likert scale questions and open-ended questions to gauge student engagement and performance. It will be distributed via email to a random sample of 500 high school students currently enrolled in online courses. Include details about your data analysis plan. If you're concluding or conducting qualitative research, describe how you will code and analyze your data. Mention any software tools that you will use, such as Envivo or Atlas.ti for qualitative analysis, or SPSS and Excel for quantitative. This section should ultimately be thorough so your methodology is clear and replicable. Uh, moving on to the expected outcome section. Here you will outline what you anticipate discovering through your research. Uh, this isn't ultimately about predicting your results, but rather about highlighting the potential implications and contributions of your study. For example, you might write, this study aims to provide insights into the effectiveness of online learning and identify strategies to enhance engagement and performance. Discuss how your findings could impact educational practices, policies, or further research. The timeline section helps you to map out um, your plan for completing the dissertation. So break your project into stages, literature review, data collection, data analysis, writing, and revision. Estimate how long each stage will take and set specific deadlines. For example, literature review, two weeks, data collection, three weeks, data analysis, four weeks. This timeline will help you keep you on track and ensure that you make steady progress. Finally, the references section is where you will list the sources that you cited in your proposal. Use the appropriate citation style for your field, whether it's APA, MLA, Chicago, or another. Tools like Zotero or EndNote can help you to manage your references and format them correctly. So double check your citations for accuracy to avoid any issues with plagiarism. Now, let's discuss some tips for actively applying this worksheet. Start by setting aside dedicated time for each section. Don't try to complete the entire worksheet in one setting. Break it down into manageable chunks and focus on one section at a time. This will help you stay focused and avoid feeling overwhelmed. Use the examples provided in the worksheet ultimately as a guide. They're there to show you how to structure your entries and what kind of detail to include. If you're stuck, refer back to these examples to get back on track. Also, as you fill out each section, remember um, to keep your research question and objectives in mind. Make sure that everything you include is relevant and contributes to answering your research question. This will help you maintain a clear and coherent narrative throughout your proposal. Remember to save your work frequently, especially if you're working on a computer. It's always a good idea to have backups either on a cloud, service, or an external drive to prevent any loss of data. Finally, uh, once you've completed the worksheet, take a step back, review it as a whole. Um, also, you wanna look for any gaps or inconsistencies and address them before moving on to writing your full proposal. Using this worksheet as a guide will make the process of writing your dissertation proposal more organized and ultimately less stressful. It provides you a clear roadmap, helping you stay focused and on track and ultimately get done quicker. So as we wrap up today, I want to remind you that if you need additional support, Writers ER is here to help. Our team of experts can provide you uh, with personalized guidance uh, to ensure that your proposal is top notch. So visit our website below and book a call to discuss how we can assist you uh, in your journey. Whether you need help with a specific section or comprehensive support throughout the process, we are here to help you succeed. So next, I will talk about how to effectively use these processes and strategies to expedite uh, your process. So stick with me and I'll make sure that you have what you need.
to get done in record time. As we approach the end of our uh, journey through research methods, quantitative and qualitative data analysis, and leveraging AI tools, let's take a moment to recap the main points that I've talked about in this video. Uh, today, I've explored the foundational elements uh, necessary for creating a robust dissertation proposal, discussed the differences and applications of qu quantitative and qualitative research methods, delved into the tools that can streamline your research process and provide practical tips for completing uh, your proposal efficiently. Uh, first, um, I talked about emphasizing the importance of selecting the right research method for your dissertation. This choice sets uh, the tone for your entire research project and ensures that your approach aligns with your research questions and objectives. Whether you opt for quantitative methods with their focus on numerical data and statistical analysis or qualitative methods that explore deeper, more nuanced insights through interviews and focus groups, the key is to choose the right method that best fits your research goals. Next, I talked about quantitative research methods, discussing how tools like surveys, experiments, or longitudinal uh, studies can help you gather and analyze data. I provided actionable uh, advice on designing effective surveys and experiments and highlighted the importance of statistical tools such as SPSS, R, and Excel in analyzing uh, your data. Remember, the power of quantitative research lies in its ability to provide clear, measurable results that can be generalized to larger populations. We then shifted our focus to qualitative research methods where we explored the richness of interviews, focus groups, and ethnography. Uh, we shared tips on conducting effective interviews and focus groups and stressed the importance of coding and thematic analysis. Tools like Invivo and Atlas.ti can be incredibly useful in organizing and analyzing qualitative data, helping you uncover patterns and themes that provide deep insights into your research question. Following that, uh, we dove into the exciting realm of AI tools and how they can accelerate your research process from the literature review management tools like Zotero, EndNote, and Mendeley to data con collection and analysis platforms such as Qualtrics and Tableau and writing and editing aids like Grammarly and Turnitin, AI can significantly streamline your workflow. These tools not only save you time, but also enhance accuracy and quality of your work. We also introduced a practical worksheet to help you apply what you have learned. This worksheet guides you through each stage of your proposal, from defining your research question to outlining your methodology, reviewing your literature, and planning your timeline. It's a hands-on tool designed to keep you organized and focused that you uh, in a, ensuring that you cover all of the essential components of a strong dissertation proposal. Throughout this video, I've aimed to provide you not just the theoretical knowledge, but also practical and actionable advice that, can, that you can implement immediately. I understand the unique challenges faced by doctoral students, such as balancing family, work, and studies um, to you know managing time effectively and overcoming the fear of not achieving career goals. These tips and tools are designed to help you to navigate these challenges with confidence and efficiency. Now, before we wrap up, I want to ultimately thank you for joining me on this journey today. Uh, your commitment to advancing your education and achieving your academic goals is truly inspiring. So I hope you found this video informative and empowering and that you are now equipped with the knowledge and the tools to take your dissertation proposal to the next level. If you found this content helpful, please take a moment to like, comment, and subscribe. Your engagement helps us to reach more uh, students like you who can benefit from these resources and support. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you never miss an update uh, from our channel. As, a, as we close, I want to remind you the invaluable support available through Writers ER. Our personalized services are designed to help uh, you succeed, whether you need detailed guidance on a specific, a specific section of the proposal or 
comprehensive support throughout the entire process. Visit our website, the link is in the description below to explore our resources and schedule a call with one of our experienced advisors. We are here to help you navigate the complexities of your dissertation journey and to achieve your academic dreams. So thank you once again for watching. Uh, best of luck to you um, in your research. And remember that you have the tools and support that you need to succeed. So until next time, take care and keep pushing forward.